Our first sketch tonight is Daniel Kravitz, chosen one. Daniel Kravitz is a 30-year-old with a life he hates, running a store he despises. All of that is about to, well, not change exactly, but certainly get interesting. This is episode one, Not Bored for Long. We join Daniel and his sole employee and friend, Abby, on a typical day, cataloging products such as exotic spices, strange necklaces, and medieval weapons. Look at this battle axe. The symbols inlaid on the handle are perfectly preserved. Who cares about some rusty old battle axe? It's not rusty. It's actually in excellent condition. God, I'm bored. Do something to entertain me, Abby. Quit whining, Danny. Oh, you know you ha- I hate it when you call me Danny. Quit whining, Danny. If you want to do something with your life, do it. I can't. I have this shop to manage. We've been over this a million times. Just because your father left you this beautiful store full of antiquities and rare books doesn't mean you have to devote your life to it. You could sell it and do something else. He wouldn't want me to sell it. He loved this place. I know he did, but he also loved you. He'd want you to be happy. There are so many things you could be doing instead of sitting here and complaining about being bored day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like anything you like. I don't know what I want to do. And there's your problem. (sighs) Well, here, I've got an idea. Why don't you figure out what I want to do and then get me a job doing it? I don't think so. Why not? You just complain about whatever it is, and I'm not going to be blamed for your continued unhappiness. Hmm, why not? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Well, what about you? What do you want to do with your life? Did I just hear you right? Did Daniel Kravitz actually ask me, Abby Reynolds, about myself? (laughs) Fine. If you're going to act like that, then I don't want to know. I actually would like to run this shop without a total grump for a boss. Hmm. I love it here. All the history and mystery lining these shelves, it's pretty much my passion. I said I didn't want to know. Go help our customer. Are you Daniel Kravitz? Oh, this is uh, Abby, the cashier. She'd love to help you. I'm not here to buy anything. I'm looking for Daniel Kravitz. Yes, he's Daniel Kravitz. Uh, Sorry, I'm on break. (sighs) Daniel, I'm so glad I found you. We don't have any time to lose. I think you have the wrong guy. I'm certain I don't. I've come a long way to find you, and there is not one moment to lose. Uh, look, Mr... Rufus. Uh, Rufus Reginald Rochester. uh, Right. uh, Well, anyway, Rufio, uh, (laughs) sorry you came all the way here, but uh, I'm very busy. Uh, Lots and lots of customers, so uh, you can buy something, but I'm going on break, so... uh, I can't talk to you now. You don't understand. The fate of the world rests on your shoulders. <laughs> the fate of the world on his shoulders? That's rich. Abby, Abby, did you put him up to this? Not me. It must have been one of your other friends. 
I don't have any other. This matter is really quite urgent. Look, I'll, I'll follow you to your break room, and I can fill you in on what's going on. Uh, no thanks. Uh, we have a no crazy policy. You understand it. We do? We didn't even... When did we even get a break room? Mm. I can see I'm not getting through to you, but this really is no joking matter. You are the chosen one. The one person on earth who can save us from demons and ghosts and Satan and all the other things that go bump in the night. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, uh... <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. No, no, you're not listening. There is only ever one chosen one. And the previous one, well, he just died. You were activated. Don't you feel different? Well, I've been a little gassy. uh, (laughs) Other than that, no. Hmm. The spell must not have set in yet. (laughs) Spells? Seriously? Listen, just because I own an ancient shop full of, you know, mystical crap, it, it doesn't mean that I believe in any of it. It doesn't care whether you believe in it or not. It's coming, and you have to be ready. We need to figure out why you haven't been activated and give it a jump start, if you will, uh, to get you going. Look, man, no one is jumping me. Uh, You were funny for a minute, but but this is over. It's not over. I'm not leaving until you hear me. Have you called the police? No, the police can't help. Only you can, Daniel Kravitz. Only you can save us all. If you don't, we're doomed. Now, well, now you're contradicting yourself. See, if I fail to stop anything, won't another chosen one just activate? I... Uh, it, it may be too late by then. And if there's a problem with the activation spell in you, uh, there's no guarantee it'll pass into the next person like it's supposed to. Well, here, let me save you some trouble. Go ahead and redraft your will if you think some it is coming because I have a busy week and I just don't have time for this. The cops are on their way. Please. Here, take this book. It'll tell you, well, not everything, but it'll prove that some of what I'm saying is true. Please! What the heck was that? Well, at least you can't claim you're bored now, right? The next morning... You're here early. Uh, I couldn't wait to get back to this book. It's fascinating. What book? Oh, is there a seventh Twilight Out? (sighs) No, the book Rufus Regibald Rub, whatever his name was, left you yesterday. Who? The crazy guy that ran in here declaring you the chosen one. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you ill? Yesterday. Weird British guy came in here looking for you and ranting. Mm -hmm. And you had me call the cops on him. Yeah, nope, sorry. Not ringing a bell. Oh, you're a freaking jerk. (laughs) You're the one who believed me. Now, on a related note, did you know that gullible is not in the dictionary? So, his book, I mean, is it interesting? You know, a good fantasy and all that? Absolutely. Lots of stuff about demons Mm. and monsters and stuff. All pretty scary. And the heroic chosen one who defeats all of them. Ooh, it looks like it belongs in the trash to me. <sighs> Not at all. This is hundreds of years old. I won't touch it without wearing gloves. It could be worth a fortune. Well, he left it, so I guess it's ours to sell now. So tag it and put it on a shelf. <sighs> Rufus said this was about you. Aren't you the slightest bit curious? Why do I care what some insane man says? Even if it's not true. If? Okay, so even if it isn't true, it's a really cool read. No thanks. I think the latest issue of Sports Illustrated is due out today, and believe me, that is far more gripping than anything. I don't understand why you always Abby is interrupted by a rumble outside. What was that? Oh, I think it was my stomach. I mean, I only had four eggs for breakfast this morning, and I was out of toast. You know, still kind of hungry. There is another louder rumble. No, it's coming from outside. Don't you hear it? An earthquake? I don't think so. An even louder rumble is followed by a loud crash, like a building exploding into rubble. I'm going outside to check it out. Don't do that. It's safer in here. Abby! Abby! Damn it. What? 
Daniel and Abby emerge from the shop to see a gross giant worm creature with teeth and pinchers has burst through the sidewalk and is destroying shops while their neighbors flee in panic. Look at that! Uh, I see it. What is it? Oh, it looks like a giant worm with teeth and pinchers. Oh, gross. How can you be so calm when looking at a 50-foot tall monster worm? Well, the block away. I mean, let's just go back inside. And, and, and what, Daniel, we'll hide under a desk? Oh, Daniel, what's wrong? Daniel, talk to me. Daniel's eyes have closed, and he goes into a trance. He begins shaking violently. Talk to me, Daniel. Daniel. Oh, God. Abby, go home. Now. What? J- just do it. Go through the shop and through the back door and run home as fast as you can. What are you going to do? N- nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm going home too. Daniel, what happened to you just now? Nothing. I'm fine. Look, let's go. Okay, let me grab my keys. Daniel, why are you holding that battle axe? I, I don't know. Are you going to fight that worm thing? I think I am. <laughs> Why? Uh, Maybe the book wasn't total fantasy. Of course it was. Then why is there a giant, you know, worm monster down the block? I don't know. God damn it, I don't want to fight that thing. Then don't. Put down the axe and come with me. I I, I can't. I can't explain it, Abby. It's, It's like I'm being pulled towards it. You never swung that axe in your life. You can't fight that thing. It'll eat you. I know. So why are you still walking towards it? Why are you still following me? I'm not going to leave you. I'd leave me if I could. I I don't seem to be able to. What the hell? Daniel, you're getting way too close to that thing. I know. I can smell its breath. It smells awful. Stop it, Daniel. You're scaring me. Abby, get out of the way. Daniel, I'm not going to let you fight this thing. Damn it, Abby, get back now. Okay, fine. Just tell that, tell that thing not to kill me. Listen, Abby, uh, the shop is yours. There's, a, there's a, a deed in the left desk drawer. I signed it over to you years ago. Daniel! Oh, God, I can't watch. Daniel runs at the creature, swinging the ex- expertly over his head as if he had been training with it for years. The thing dodges, then makes an attempt to bite at Daniel's back. The next moments are furious. Daniel lopping off a pincher, the creature tossing him half a block. Again and again, they attack, both sweating and bleeding. But in the end, one is dead, and the other stands victorious, injured, but able to limp away. (laughs) A few days later... You did it! I'm so proud of you. Get out. (laughs) I was watching. The way you handled that axe, it was nothing short of spectacular. I wanted to run to you right away, of course, but decided it might be better to give you a little time to cool down. Get out. Look, I've worked with the last three chosen ones, and I'd never seen anything like that before. You are amazing. Get the hell out of here before I physically pick you up and throw you out. But I, I, I just... Rufus, you're back! He was just leaving. What? No, why? I'm not leaving. That creature was only the beginning. There will be more, far, far worse than that thing. Get out! Daniel, what's wrong? He was right about you. You brought that thing here. I didn't. I could have been killed! Abby could have been killed! Take your book and your worms and your... Axes and just get far away from my shop. No, I had nothing to do with that thing coming here. Well, there weren't any giant worms in the neighborhood before you showed up. (laughs) It came because of you. Because you're the chosen one. It's a minion of the ultimate evil. Do you even hear yourself? You sound insane. You saw it. You know it's real. Daniel, I think he's here to help. I don't want his kind of help. We were doing just perfectly fine here without him. I just want things to go back to the way they were. I'm sorry. If I could take your destiny away from you, I would. 
I don't have any control over that. You are what you are. I am here to help prepare you, to mentor you, so you'll be ready for when it comes for you. You have five seconds to get out of here before I do to you what I did to that worm. Daniel, if you would please Fire. just... Li- please, Daniel, listen to me. I can help... Three. Daniel, stop this. Leave Rufus alone. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't have had any warning at all. Two. We don't know what's coming. He does. If this book he gave us is any indication, we need him. One. All right, all right. I'm leaving. Your store, but not the town. You're going to need my help, and when you do, I'll be here. Daniel Eugene Kravitz. That was rude. You could have died. I don't care. That no, man... No, Abby, you're, you're not hearing me. You could have died. If you had... You got the shop, right? I need to go home. Daniel! Well, that was depressing. Will Daniel accept his fate? Will he rise to the challenge of stopping the ultimate evil and saving the world? Will he ever trust Rufus? Find out next month in another exciting installment of Daniel Kravitz's Chosen One. Daniel Kravitz's Chosen One, not bored for long. Starring Nathan Haley as Daniel Kravitz, Wendy Parks as Abby Reynolds, Shane Stefanchik as Rufus Reginald Rochester, and was narrated by Chris Allen. You told me I could. You can. Yeah. All right, so, and we're back. We feel that the live, this live performance is a special experience, and we don't want to dilute that. Really dilute? We're going to use a physics...